جزاكم الله خير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وإمام المتقين ورحمة الله للعالمين سيدنا مولانا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل عقدة من لساني يبقه قولي الحمد لله it's my great honor and pleasure to be with all of you in this afternoon to share together some information about our beloved religion al Islam and as we know Islam is a very wide religion and because of that we have so much corners beautiful corners about Islam which all of us has to understand I used to say always uh, up to now up to date we have about 1200 tafsir al-Quran al-Karim 1200 Quran interpretation and that means Islam is a very open religion uh, and there's a sea of knowledge on it where the scholars always going to discover for the goodness of humanity and the goodness in particular of the believers to upgrade always their iman to reach to the level where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to bless them with acceptance in this life and in the hereafter insha'Allah. The panel of my panel Al-Faqir Allah uh, about the impact of Sufis in Southeast Asia. When we talk about Southeast Asia, because Sufis has its impact in the whole world, in fact. With Allah's barakah, Al-Faqir Allah, I travel a lot in the world, Africa, and other, Europe, and in Asia, and other countries. And I have saw, I've seen in my eyes, and I've heard in my ears how the people felt, and why they entered Islam, and what type of books they used to read, even nowadays such as the books of Imam Al-Ghazali, Sheikh Abu Qajilani, and other respected ulamas. And these books are written 1,000, almost 1,000 years back. And when they read it nowadays, they understood that Islam is not nowadays what we can see in TV, sometimes the wrong information, but this is the real Islam, 1,000 years. So that is, let's say, the ideology of Islam, the heart of Islam it comes to them through uh, the readings, through solely the rights, the books, and the knowledge of respected scholars in our religion. So uh, in Southeast Asia in particular, Alhamdulillah, I've been traveled a lot, and I've met so much of people, and uh, we, I think through that, he say your experience will come when you travel, not when you read. Because when you read, you're talking, you're reading about someone who has seen and he's wrote by himself. So he's a traveler. Or he's expert in something. He was traveling in, not only in the land or uh, uh, from place to place, but he traveled maybe in a sea of knowledge as well. So for that, we have to uh, get ready by all the time, or for all of them, by having the tools to do so is not anyone can be a great alim, and not anyone can be a alim who's not, uh, not going to benefit others. But we are secured all the time by our religion, by sharia, and by the understanding of ulamas to Al-Quran wa Sunnah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. As we know, let us focus on our uh, 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 panel, the impact of Sufis. First of all, I want to say something very important. People misunderstood sometimes the meaning of tasawwuf. So straight away, maybe they will criticize. In this part, they're criticizing the whole Islam, I can say. Because there are many alims, and most of them Sufis, whom they carried Islam everywhere, and they continue to carry Islam everywhere. <clears throat> so we have to understand the meaning of Sufis, tasawwuf, what, is, what does it mean? And a sufiya the followers of tasawwuf. You see, like for example, in fiqh, you say, al-shafi'i, al-madhab al-shafi'i, and al-shafi'iyya, the followers of uh, the madhab 
the school of thought of Sayyidina Imam al-Shafi'i. So here, there, we have to understand, because there is tajdeed sometimes. They renew some things. They bring something uh, up, they upgrade by more understand to Islam through Al-Quran and Sunnah. So in Tasawwuf, or let's say in as Sufiya, the followers of Tasawwuf, we can see the great people, and we can see some others who, through their belief, maybe, they made some mistakes. And that you can find it anywhere in the world. In your house, your children, not all of them clever, smart, and not, not all of them uh, lazy. In our life, we have day and night. It's two different things. So the problem is not for us to say this so and so is wrong, but to say what he meant and what he should say, how to correct what he has said. So we cannot criticize the whole uh, 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 thing because of a mistake of one person, like what's happened nowadays in our life. Al-Islam have reached to these countries, as they call it, New Santara, which is Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, Brunei, Singapore, through a Sufiya, Ahl Tasawuf. Those, most of them, they used to be the traders. In the meantime, they are not only traders, but they are believers. And they, as a believer, they've been taught is to carry the mission all the time, Everywhere. Yani each of us have to be da'iyah. Not I have to study to be da'iyah. I can be da'iyah, invite others through my akhlaq, not only through my saying, it's through my words, through my knowledge. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah sent him as a rahmah and as a person who carried the great moral character sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa innaka la'ala khuluqin azim. So those people, part of the, their knowledge, which is the most important part, is al-akhlaq. How to be a good person. There is a saying by one of the ulama, he said, At-tasawwuf kulluhu akhlaq. Faman zada alayka fi al-akhlaq, zada alayka bi tasawwuf Tasawwuf all moral characters. So when he increase your moral characters, in fact, he increase your tasawwuf. And tasawwuf came from pure Safa, there's difference between nadif, clean, and pure, which is safi. Clean, yes, clean water, but maybe still there is a virus or gems. But pure is totally pure, crystal. So those they want to reach to purification of their soul, purification of their hearts within a sharia, in meaning that I want my salat, my prayer, to be with khushu, I have to feel it, not exercise. I have to fast to worship, not fast to breakfast. I have to go to hajj to worship Allah, not going to picnic. I have to give charity with my heart, not because of show off or not I feel when I give, or oh, my money is losing. So this understanding is what the reality of the sawf, one of the meaning of the sawf. Those whom they carry a tasawuf to these countries, most of the researchers and the scholars, they said Islam have reached, and these people have reached it during the seventh century. And, you know, for example, in Indonesia, entered through Aceh, uh, in Malaysia, from Malacca, and other places. And, you know, I think most of you know the story about this region that the kings, when they converted to Islam, the whole people followed them also. And those Sufis, they have not only helped them to convert to Islam, but they continue the message by being ambassadors of Islam in these countries to keep continue teaching them. Not only for someone to say, okay, you be Muslim, for example, that's all. No, I have to take care of him like a seed, like my children. And that's what these people have done. And uh, most of them, these scholars at Duat, they have settled in these lands, and they have a roots. 
Nowadays, you can many of uh, there are so much of uh, in, in Malaysian population. They are uh, uh, population. They are originally Arabs. They are originally Indians, and others. Those people, they came, their ancestors, when they came here a long time before, as a traders and so on, they they used to carry the message of Islam clearly and uh, very pure. I want to quote to you something, a saying by uh, Professor Sayyid Naqib Al Attas who is very known, a uh, very uh, known scholar in, in Malaysia and in, in especially in the history of this uh, new center in, 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 in Malaysia, Southeast Asia. He has said something very interesting in his book, uh, which called some aspects of Sufism as understood in practiced among the Malays. This book he has printed many number of times and I'm quoting this uh, saying, uh, this what he have wrote here uh, from the book, which printed in 19, the copy of 1963. He said, I strongly believe that the Sufi preaching of the self same universal spirit that accounted for the inductial, uh, identi uh, sorry, identical experience found in the doctrines of different religions has made it possible for the plural societies that have exist in Malaysia to live side by side peacefully and with a spirit of tolerance that is evident even to this day. Through the early Sufis preachers and du'at up to now till this moment they try their best to have the people to live together in peace. Before I da'wah to Allah, I invite others to Allah, I have to prepare the environment. I have to prepare the hearts of the people. Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our greatest example, when he started inviting people to Islam in Mecca for 13 years before he migrated to Medina, there is no war, he never fought anyone, he never touched any statues with his hand to break it. He had broken the statues in their hearts and then they broke it by their hand themselves. So that is how is the da'wah. We have to use the same things, not with the non-Muslims, to invite them with tolerance, with akhlaq, with our brothers and sisters nowadays as well. Islam is a religion of you When you say, I follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is not only follow him how he pray and how he fast. The greatest sunnah of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is al-akhlaq. His akhlaq Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Your good manners will bring to you, uh, uh, will make people's heart submitted to you. And that's what Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he been asked by Sahaba, ayyul mu'mineen, when he asked a Sahaba, they've asked him, Ayul akbaluhum akhlaqan, imanan, Ayul iman qala, ahsanuhum akhlaqan. The best of the believers is the one who has the best moral character. That's what he have said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And beside his knowledge and beside his, uh, how he, uh, beside his, the, the, the way, the methods to invite others to Islam. So he need these two. Just now, before I come, somebody sent me a, a nice email. He said, the people saying, for example, when we watch movie or film, when you see that someone uh, uh, opened the door for his wife, for her to in the car of uh, the door of his car, he say this is too, this is something too uh, too generous, too polite husband to do that to his wife, or for example, when someone feed his wife, they say, see, look, we're talking about the West. But we forgot that Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, yani, if you feed your family to put the food in their mouth, it is sadaqah. And Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in, in Al-Khandaq, when his wife Safiya, radiallahu anha, she, was, she wanted to, to, to ride the camel, he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, put her, uh, uh, help her by, by putting his hand and his leg, you know, to carry her, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to do so. So that is akhlaq in Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, there are other things we can see in the world, but in the meantime, we have very rich history 
and very rich information that have used uh, uh, by the scholars also to explain about Sirah to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is what used by Sufis. When I said Sufis, I don't mean uh, sometimes the, nowadays Sufis which has people will, will think about one view, will see one view. Like someone who don't have knowledge, he talk as he like, or someone who only sit in a circle of zikr, uh, that's all. They say that is what? No. At a Sufis knowledge, most of the ulamas of Sufis, we have read about them, they are ulama, they are great scholars. And uh, uh, because of that, because of their knowledge and because of the tolerance they have, people really appreciated Islam and they entered to Islam. I know we are talking about South Asia, but it's, it's good also to mention about something very important. In, in 2005, I was in a visit to uh, United States in San Francisco. Then I met someone who's a professor. He's a lecturer in university, and he's a Muslim. Then he came to ask about something in a, one of the books of Al-Imam Al-Ghazali, radiallahu an. So, Al-Faqih I tried to explain to him. Then after that, I asked him a question. I said, I said to him, can I ask you please a question? He said, yes. I said, how long have you been converted to Islam? He said, two years, I mean 2003. That was 2005, Ramadan 2005. So I said to him, uh, may I know why you converted to Islam? What is the reason behind? He said, in simple words, I found myself. I found myself. I said, can you explain to me how you found yourself? He said, after September 11, you know, the people in the world, they confused. There are three parties, divided to three parts. One attacking Islam, one defending Islam. In between, they are confused people. So I was one of those confused. Then I asked myself, I, for me to know about Islam, better to ask my students about Islam. What is Islam? The Muslim students. So I asked them, and they said, if you want, we can bring you a books about Islam. Say, please, bring me a books, but don't bring nowadays. I want books to a few hundreds of years back. I mean, the age of Islam, the early Islam. His students, he said, mainly most of them from Pakistan and India, other countries, he said, they brought to me uh, books, one of the books of Imam al-Ghazali and the book of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jailani, and I don't know, some other respected scholars. He said, when I go through the books, one month took from me to read the books. After one month, I converted to Islam. Alhamdulillah. He saw, he have gone, this is the Islam, 1,000, almost 1,000 years. Not nowadays Islam. So that is the idea of Islam. That is the spirit of Islam. That's the ideology of Islam, which came through these ulamas. So, alhamdulillah, you know, the, we have a rich history and we have rich information by respected, until nowadays, of course. It's continued to be, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. So, that is what's happened before when those alims came, these traders came to invite the nations to Islam. They use the same way and in a polite way. For example, in Indonesia, I, I asked about one of the ulamas who's very famous there. His name, I think, Abdul Latif. Uh, Abdul Latif, Sangil, something. Very famous alim. They're very, there's so much of followers. And his books, I go through his books, is in Fiqh Shafi'i and explaining Sharah al -Kutub, the book, some of the books of Imam al Ghazali and other ulama. It's really books of knowledge. It's not just like people gather for zikr and they go without knowing. No, there is knowledge here, of course. So I, I said to them, what he used to do, I mean, his da'wah. He said he used to go to villages where there is non-Muslims. And you know, in these countries, in, in Malaysia, Indonesia, they are very welcome people and they're very nice, very polite. They smile all the time. And through their life, you can see, because of the impact of uh, uh, the ruling, the, 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 the monarch here, they have a respect to their kings, to their... Uh, uh, rulers, and they have not only that respect, the one who is elder than me, one year I have to respect him and kiss his hand. It's to show a signal of respect. So they like this way. 
They like someone to, you know, uh, to be nice with them as well, to exchange the same thing with them. When he go to the village, when he entered, he say he used to uh, uh, walk in the roads of the village, for example, and he said La ilaha illallah in a very nice tune. La ilaha illallah. Very nice, subhanAllah, you go. So the children followed him and they started reciting with him La ilaha illallah. You know, and then he recited some salawat or maybe some verses of the Holy Quran. And those people followed him and then after that they seated with him and he started talking with them. We found that though most of these villages, Alhamdulillah, converted thousands of people because what he have done through his knowledge and through his style, which is, I don't think so, it is, I, I believe it's a great style. Allah alam. So, they are a good example to all of us. They are a good example to all of us to do. Because maybe I am someone who's big alim, but his knowledge is not enough without akhlaq. And that is the sunnah of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Islam came to these countries through akhlaq and continue to be and you can see the impact of Sufis in their life by, by their celebration, by their activities, by khatm al-Quran, tahleel, uh, recitation of Mawlid al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, celebration of Isra al-Mi'raj, celebration of other. This is all carried to them by those people those days, even the way of the style of, they have so much of things, the, the, the way they salam each other, the way, so that is, in fact, I, I, there's one alim came before, Allah Yerham, Dr. Abdul Qadir Al-Ani, he was one of those who uh, work in the Islamic Islam, encyclopedia in Kuwait. He came here first time and he saw what's happening. He, he said, SubhanAllah, if you want to see a good practice of Muslims, at least the practice in these countries. You say, really, there's something, they will come in, the way they talk, the way they, they, they pray at the mosque. And so he said, this really brought to me a, a, a very good, uh, uh, in fact, inspired, he said, it's really inspired me by seeing them doing so. And then we said, yeah, Sheikh, if you see what they are reading, they read, for example, Ratib al-Attas, Ratib al-Haddad, the ulama, those from Hadramaut, whom they brought Islam to also, one of the panels of Islam to, they brought Islam to these countries. That is what they're doing, and that is their teaching, that their books. So we are talking about the reality of Islam, which comes through the reality of true teaching of Islam, knowledge and uh, akhlaq, these two together, like body and spirit. To be nafs cannot be separated, two in one. And the practice of these Muslims also, the Muslims here or in Indonesia and other places, for example, the madhhab of Imam al-Shafi'i, that's because of those ulama when they came, most of them Shafi'i.